Good morning. La date du 6 décembre 1989 sera à jamais gravée dans notre mémoire, mais aussi dans notre cœur. Ce jour-là, 32 ans en passé, 14 femmes ont été froidement assassinées, uniquement car elles étaient des femmes. Aujourd'hui, la population du Canada et du Québec se souvient des victimes de Polytechnique. Cette forme de tragédie ne doit plus jamais se reproduire. Nous le devons aux victimes. While the holidays are quickly approaching, there is still no plan to tackle many of the challenges facing our country. This is supposed to be a time to celebrate with family and friends, but Canadian families are worried. Worried about rising costs, worried about housing, worried about what all this means for their family, and most importantly, worried that no help is coming. But as I've said before, Canada's Conservatives are here to be a voice for the millions of Canadians left behind in Justin Trudeau's economy. Pour les familles qui vont mettre moins de cadeaux sous le sapin cette année. Pour les étudiants qui veulent éterrer chaque dollar pour faire le plein d'essence pour rentrer à la maison. Et pour les personnes âgées qui vont choisir les produits d'épicerie selon leur budget pour remplir leur garde-manger. These are everyday examples of skyrocketing inflation. It makes life less affordable for everyone. It affects every Canadian. Yet the Liberals have put forward no plan to address it. As the Prime Minister has said, he doesn't think about monetary policy. This isn't about numbers in ledgers. It's about the impact the Trudeau government's mismanagement is having on people. Le Canada traverse une crise du logement. Les prix des maisons et des loyers sont de plus en plus chers. Combien de jeunes familles sont incapables de s'acheter une première maison, comme leurs parents et leurs grands-parents avant eux? Plusieurs sont même forcés de quitter les quartiers ou les localités où elles ont grandi, faute de logements abordables. This week, Canada's Conservatives will hold Justin Trudeau's government to account for economic failures. They have left Canadians behind in their high tax, high debt agenda, and they've left people behind in Afghanistan who are at risk because they helped Canada. Tomorrow, Conservatives are calling for the creation of a special committee to review the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. Cette semaine, les Conservateurs du Canada vont demander au gouvernement Trudeau de rendre des camps pour ses échecs. Demain, les Conservateurs vont demander la création d'un comité spécial chargé d'étudier la chute de l'Afghanistan aux mains des Talibans. They had months to plan for U.S. troops pulling out of Afghanistan, to plan for what that would mean for Canadians on the ground and Afghans on the ground who fought or served alongside Canada. Yet the Liberal government has brought less than 10% of the Afghan refugees to Canada that they promised. They called a pandemic election when Justin Trudeau should have been showing leadership. This committee will help Canadians understand why they failed to act. Rhetoric and empty promises are what we've heard from this government at a time that Canadians desperately need progress. And on Thursday, we will hold the Trudeau government to account for their failure to address the cost of living crisis that is pricing families out of their homes and driving up the costs of everyday goods all of this while wages across the country are stagnant. Comme opposition officielle, nous allons être la voix des millions de Canadiens que l'économie de Justin Trudeau abandonne tous les jours. Nous allons défendre nos alliés en Afghanistan qui souffrent sous le régime des Talibans. Et nous allons nous battre pour offrir à chaque région et à chaque secteur les outils nécessaires pour relancer l'économie dont ils ont besoin. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I'm ready for some questions. Oui, bonjour à l'INADIB, la presse canadienne. Monsieur O'Toole, vous euh, dénoncez le format hybride euh, des travaux parlementaires. Vous avez dit que tous vos députés seraient là en personne. Et même quand des ministres se présentent à, à l'écran, vous les huez, vous et, et vos députés. Alors, j'aimerais comprendre pourquoi est-ce que quatre de vos députés n'ont pas été là en personne toute la semaine hier et ont participé de façon virtuelle au débat. Comme vous le savez, on a lutté pour un euh, parlement régulier, pas un hybride, pas un parlement par Zoom. Mais malheureusement, l'NPD et les libéraux 
ont travaillé ensemble pour un parlement hybride. Maintenant, on va pousser pour le retour des comités, pour les débats et pour la transparence, parce qu'on va utiliser la, le parlement hybride, mais ma maintenant, c'est très important pour notre parti d'avoir les comités, d'étudier les défis devant nous. Vous ne répondez pas du tout à ma question. Je vous parle de quatre de vos députés qui ne se sont pas présentés en personne. Je voudrais savoir si c'est en lien avec leur statut vaccinal. Comme vous le savez, il y a six mois, j'ai dit, tous nos députés vont suivre les règles sanitaires. C'était le cas depuis les débuts de la pandémie et on va suivre les règles maintenant. C'est important aussi d'avoir une approche professionnelle en ce qui concerne la pandémie et l'information sur les vaccins, sur la, la, les mesures sanitaires. Tous nos députés vont suivre les règles, incluant ici sur la colline. Donc, la présentation vaccinale qu'ils avaient présentée et qui doit être contre-vérifiée à cause de la motion qui était adoptée, elles n'étaient pas, pas vraies, elles n'étaient pas correctes à ces quatre députés-là? Comme j'ai dit, tous nos députés vont suivre les règles. Si vous avez des questions pour les quatre députés, posez les questions. Mais j'ai, comme chef, j'ai dit, c'est très important pour tous les Canadiens de se faire vacciner et d'avoir une approche de division des, 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 des questions sur euh, la situation personnelle d'un Canadien. C'est une question pour chaque personne. Mais les vaccins sont primordiaux dans notre lutte. Et j'ai des, des, des attentes pour mon équipe d'avoir une approche professionnelle et toujours suivre les règles. David Aiken, uh, Global News. Good morning. Um, with the news that Ambassador Barton will be leaving his post, I wonder if you had some thoughts on uh, his tenure as uh, our ambassador to China and uh, what sort of opportunity, if any, that would, might give the government to take a look at the Canada-China relationship and where it ought to put its focus on that relationship. Well, thank you, David. The Trudeau government has mishandled the relationship with China since the early days of Mr. Trudeau's time as prime minister. I'd like to thank Mr. Barton for his his service. We had no ambassador for almost a year uh, in between Mr. Barton and Mr. McCallum, who had to resign because of failures to be transparent with respect to the situation with the two Michaels. So I don't think there's any Canadian who doesn't feel that Canadian relations with China are a mess. What we need to have is a principle-based approach that shows that our economic interests in China will, will not dominate our concerns about human rights, whether for the Uyghurs, the situation in Hong Kong, uh, tensions with respect to Taiwan. We should be working with our allies, and I would hope Mr. Trudeau puts a professional, experienced diplomat in that post, not a friend of the Liberal Party. Le, la situation avec la Chine et le Canada étaient un désastre après six ans de M. Trudeau. Je me remercie Mr. Barton pour son travail, mais c'était un désastre avant lui avec M. McCallum et la situation avec les, les deux Michael. On doit avoir une approche euh, sérieuse sur l'économie et sur nos valeurs. Et la situation avec les Uyghurs, la le, le, le situation à Hong Kong, on a des inquiétudes en ce qui concerne la Chine. Et c'est le temps pour un diplomate professionnel, pas un ami de le Parti libéral. And given on specific, the specific issue of the Olympics, uh, given that the House of Commons uh, did affirm that a genocide is occurring uh, in Xinjiang, um, do you think a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Olympics is sufficient, or should we also let our athletes know that World Championships, Commonwealth Games uh, are also pretty special, and maybe this Olympics is not that, so that, not that special. This is an important question, David, and it's something I've struggled with because I've been speaking over months with Canadian Olympic Committee athletes, uh, um, Olympic uh, representatives like Mr. Pound and others, to try and see how we can express our profound displeasure with the conduct of the regime in China without hurting the, the athletes. We're all proud of the men and women who train so hard to wear our maple leaf. They should also wear our values abroad as well. So we're, we've been proposing moving the games. There, there wasn't any interest by the Trudeau government in that. We've proposed a diplomatic boycott. I think that's the best thing we can do alongside our allies to show pressure, but not to make the, the athletes pay the price for the conduct in Beijing.
Hi, Annie Bergeron Oliver with CTV National News. I'm just going to follow up on my colleague's question. The rule on the Hill is that you must be fully vaccinated to be here present. Uh, as she mentioned, four members were not present last week. They were virtual only. So does that mean they're, they are not fully vaccinated? As I've said from the beginning, all of our MPs will follow the rules. Uh, they have since the beginning of the pandemic, right from the start when we went to reduce sittings, when we went to hybrid parliament, and with respect to, to vaccinations, distancing, and everything else. As the rules change over the Hill, we will make sure that we're always not just meeting, but exceeding those rules. MPs do have the ability to, to access the hybrid parliament, something we opposed because it can be used by the Trudeau government to hide from accountability. And all MPs have that flexibility if they're not, not in Ottawa, as long as hybrid is available. And some of those questions are best referred to those MPs. The Globe is reporting today that you have called for a probe into allegations of staff mistreatment by Shannon Stubbs. When did you learn about the allegations and what are you hoping this probe produces? I learned about the, the allegations on Friday when I was in Quebec on tour. I've referred them to the, to the House of Commons because they're allegations, but they're of a serious nature. As I've been leader for a year, I've set an expectation on all my MPs that we will have a professional and respectful workplace environment. I have that expectation because we haven't seen that from the Liberal Party, which has covered up uh, allegations that came in through, through their caucus. If we're going to hold them to account, we have to make sure that, that we are... Uh, are welcoming people to work on Parliament Hill free of, of any form of, of harassment or a bad workplace. These are allegations at present, but I've asked the House of Commons to investigate them. Mr. O'Toole, Ryan Templeton, National Post. Uh, you were talking about inflation there, and clearly you want to make an issue of that this week in the House. Your party has suggested that the Liberal spending over the last couple of years has driven that uh, inflation. Much of that spending went to Canadians in the form of in the form of CERB, in the form of the wage subsidy and the rent subsidy programs. I'm wondering where over the last two years you think the Liberals spent too much? Well, the Liberals kept in place the programs they put in place at the start of the pandemic, the first wave. I think all Canadians have learned to, to deal and adapt with COVID. We're now in the, in the fourth wave uh, aftermath, and we had complaints about them keeping the, the programs in place uh, too long, include the, including the CERB. The first interview I gave a year ago as leader of the Conservative Party, I said the CERB should not just be blanketly applied across the country when we have a labour shortage. They paid $600 million, Ryan, I think I read in your paper, for 15-year-olds to stay home. Um, so there was massive overspending that was much beyond what was needed to be done during, during COVID. We should have preserved as many jobs as possible, not prefer preserved a benefit far longer than it was needed. It's the reason we have a major workplace shortage in Canada right now. We had a million job vacancies in September, largely due to the Liberals' mismanagement of those programs. And you mentioned as well uh, this committee that you were looking to structure. Are you looking for something similar to the Canada-China committee that has been running for the past uh, two years now? We think the Afghanistan study would be shorter, Ryan. The the real failure of the Trudeau government was not using the last few years and not use, using the last six months to get people out of harm's way in Afghanistan that were going to be at risk when the Taliban was re-exerting control. Uh, years ago, I got a translator out um, through Minister McCallum, but every minister since then under the Trudeau government has completely failed in Afghanistan. And I want to thank the volunteers the hundreds of veterans who stepped up and filled the void left by the Trudeau government. Ordinary Canadians were going out and bringing these people to safety because their own government had failed and dropped the ball. So I think this committee will get to the bottom of it, but I do see it being time limited, unlike the Canada-China committee. <clears throat> uh, Ian Bailey, Globe and Mail. Further to the matter about MP Stubbs. Um, will you ask Ms. Uh, Stubbs to step aside from caucus while this matter is looked at and... Uh, have you provided any direction to her while the matter is being reviewed? As I said, I was made aware of, of the allegations on Friday while I was on tour, and we've, we've referred them to be examined. Uh, they are allegations at the moment, and we will work with, with Ms. Stubbs on the process. 
The important thing for me, Ian, is to make sure that we send a signal that the expectation we have for everyone that works on the Hill and every single person in this precinct, that they should be treated with respect and we should create professional workplaces that people want to come from across the country to work in. So, um, so that's my expectation. It's why I've referred the matter uh, as soon as the allegations were, were brought to my attention. Is there a need for a more uh, independent process to look at these kinds of workplace allegations uh, in the parliamentary precinct in the House of Commons? Well, it's early days from we, we've referred the, the matter, uh, having learned about it on Friday. Um, but we have, as leaders, to set the tone. And this is what I challenge Mr. Trudeau to do, because clearly there were some allegations in the last parliament related uh, to, to one of his MPs that, that the Prime Minister's office and Mr. Holland, when he was whip, sat on. Uh, so much so that we were hearing from former Liberal staffers because they felt their concerns weren't being taken seriously by their own party. So we have to set a tone as leader, as leaders of our party, that Parliament Hill should be an example of a professional workplace with a cross-section of Canadians from all part of their country that want to serve their country. That's my expectations, but as I said, these are allegations uh, at the moment and they're being examined. Bonjour, M. O'Toole, Olivier Ferrand-Boissé de TVA. Justement, là-dessus, euh, vous parliez d'un exemple à, à instaurer pour, euh, en matière d'allégations de, de, d'harcèlement et ces choses-là. Comment ça se fait que votre bureau était au courant qu'il y avait des allégations contre Mme Stubbs en janvier et que vous décidiez d'agir en décembre seulement, donc presque un an plus tard, quand les journalistes s'intéressent à la question? On a reçu les allégations spécifiques vendredi, quand j'étais au Québec en, 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 pendant une tournée là-bas. Et les allégations sont sérieuses. Et j'ai référé les allégations à la Chambre de commerce, à euh, la Chambre de commune, euh, parce qu'on doit avoir une examination professionnelle. Mais comme j'ai dit, c'est seulement les, les allégations maintenant, et on va travailler avec euh, la députée sur l'examination. Um... J'aimerais vous entendre à nouveau sur la démission de l'ambassadeur en Chine, euh, un peu sur le contexte, parce que, bon, vous parliez plutôt du, du boycott diplomatique euh, pour les Jeux olympiques, mais il y a également d'autres gros enjeux. Je pense à celui de Huawei, le gouvernement prend une décision. Donc, dans ce contexte-là, vous pensez quoi un peu du, du timing de la démission de M. Barton? C'était une surprise, les nouvelles avec M. Barton ce matin. Et comme j'ai dit, euh, j'apprécie les, les efforts de nos diplomates à travers le monde. Uh, mais la situation avec la Chine sous le gouvernement de M. Trudeau est un désastre. Et, uh, on a des inquiétudes en ce qui concerne les Ouïghurs, la situation à Hong Kong. Uh, C'est pourquoi on a besoin d'un diplomate professionnel, pas un ami de la Parti libérale. Et pour les Olympiques, c'est approprié d'avoir un boycott diplomatique uh, pour respecter nos athlètes, mais d'envoyer un message clair. Merci beaucoup.